morning. Happy Sunday. <laughs> I'm here inside my studio. <clears throat> Again, I was going to go outside, but outside it's about to rain and it is very cold. <laughs> so we're back inside. So one of these days I'll get out there. And actually next week I'll be teaching in Quincy, Illinois, so on Saturday and Sunday. So there will not be a um, video of me teaching <laughs> um, on Sunday morning. So uh, maybe you have to do sometime during the week. And um, so anyways, today we're going to be doing this little scene right here. I've been wanting to do some plain air uh, street scenes. Um, so I'm just going to do an in studio one instead. And um, this could be a cool Sunday morning <laughs> in the city uh, look. And so we'll just pretend like we're outside. And cheers, everybody. Good morning. <laughs> I have to have my cup of coffee. <laughs> I just realized for some reason we're not getting here in um, in Illinois right here where I live. I don't get CBS Sunday morning. I don't get Channel 2 and I don't have a cable. I have an antenna on top of my roof and I just don't get Channel 2. And so I have to, I have to watch CBS Sunday morning, which is my favorite program. I had to watch it outside of <laughs> the TV. I, had to, um, I think I watched it on YouTube, which is what you're watching. <laughs> Right here we go. So what I'm going to do is my lights first, and I'm going to do my sky. And I'm going to, you know, this is very dark, a lot of black in the sky. This is basically very right here. The photo is very um, limited palette, right? It's pretty much just like maybe two colors and stuff. I may try to go a little bit different from that. I'll probably get a little bit more color than that. And so the first thing I'm going to do, I do want to get the um, sun sun being right here. I like getting that. Um, what do you call that? Uh, boy, <laughs> Carol, it's too early in the morning to be thinking. <laughs> uh, I'll think about it when I get there. Scatter. Um, what is it? Optical scatter. That's what Carol Bretzky had called it when we were, you know, when you get to this really orangey part in here. And so I, I am going to make the sky. Let's clean up my palette here a little bit. Get some paper towel. Get out my palette. And as you notice, I do have my gouache there. This morning, I'm going I'm to show you a little bit about my gouache and maybe do a little bit of gouache with this painting. Uh, that's what I want to do outside is I want to always take my, my gouache with, this is the watercolor gouache, not the acrylic gouache, but I do have the acrylic gouache, which is in the same kind of container. And um, this is my acrylic gouache, but I'm not, you know, I'll, I'll probably take them both with me. And because I use it all together, I just did that demonstration. You can see it on YouTube um, here. On this last Thursday, I did a completely painting that I did with acrylic wash, and um, I use it like watercolor. So all this, all these different mediums, I all use together. So you can use them all together. Don't worry about that. That one doesn't work with the other. And actually, I was going to try oils with those too. All right, so here we go. <laughs> Let's just wet the whole surface, and I'm going to keep this part right in here white, and so. Then one second. I feel I always need to have my like my gloves and the put my glove on. I just again so used to it. Now I'm even bringing them outside too. All right, so we're just gonna wet the whole surface. This is also good for contrast in my camera here, so that my hand is black and then you guys can see. So here we're going to put this all the way around here. I'm just going to do the sky at first here. I'm going to write on my cars and everything. There's no masking fluid down. I didn't put masking fluid down for like anything that I think I can't go around. Like these, the buses and um, cars in there. I'm just going to go around that or even put it out or use my, excuse me, use my acrylic gouache and put the, put the, use the acrylic gouache for it. So let's see. Let's go into and make it a nice orangey sky. So I'm just going to go in here with some orange, which ends up being looking kind of yellow because it's like a yellow orange. It's actually what it's called, permanent yellow orange. And so there's more yellow, I think, in that orange than there is orange as red. You know, there's not that much red in it. So we're just going to, and also I'm going to try to make it at least 20% brighter than it is when I'm looking at it right now. 
And why? Because I want, and I know it's going to dull down when it dries, and so I want to keep it all around this area. And so I'm just going to keep the sun like right in, in view here, right in, right in the front here. Also, when I get outside, I'm going to try to work a little bit bigger than this quarter sheet. And um, so I'm really kind of excited about getting out there sooner or later. It's just been like the weather's just been horrible here. It's supposed to rain. And actually, I don't mind rain, but it was the cold. You know, I actually like rainy scenes, so I, I don't mind the rain, but it's just it's like 30, 30 and some degrees out here. And it's just like, I don't want to. I just didn't know if you like it. <laughs> and right here, also, if you look right here in the picture, there's a person way back there. I brought him up. You know, I thought, you know, I, to have the, the person way back there, you know, it doesn't make a center of interest. So what did I do? I brought him way up here, made him a lot closer, like on the street in front here. And I also um, will do shadowing across that. But, and I also have light little washes there. And so what I'm gonna do now is get the street a little bit wet. And the sidewalk because cement it's really kind of weird because people realize that you know maybe it's not a wet street but anything shiny can reflect and you a lot of times a sidewalk that's um, tar you know or um, black top or cement is all when it's run over a few times you know uh, many many times it, t it ends up being very very um, shiny because it's very slick and so a lot of times it will get really, really shiny, meaning that it's like a reflection then. So then you reflect things in there. How about a little bit of wash in here? Wash it can be used like watercolor, which it is. It's watercolor, but it's a little bit more opaque. And so um, you can wet it down and then make it look like watercolor, transparent watercolor, by just wetting it down with a lot of water. And so I'm going to do the street here. A little bit of purple in there. Purple and yellow is basically my, going to be my complementary colors that I'm going to be using. And so when you mix those two colors together, you get kind of a brownish, brownish color or a gray color. And also by mixing these colors i have a whole new array of colors too to choose from too <laughs> you know a couple of blues and stuff that i thought you know i don't have any other and also when i mix in my if i mix in my acrylic wash i even have metallics and and it's all like i said it's all water based water medium so you know go ahead and use it it's all absolutely fine so i'm gonna get the wet street here or the shiny street i shouldn't say wet because it's not Sometimes you don't have to have a street wet to make it look shiny. Like I just explained before, you can have it just be nice and nice and wet looking because of the shininess of it, because it's been run over so many times. And the sun, see it's going right down here, so I want to keep these parts nice and bright. Some, some yellow in there. And so, as always, I always do my lights first, right? You always get your lights done. Mm -hmm. Step one, my three-step process of painting every painting is the first step is um, the lights and the colors. So I'm going for the colors, figuring out the colors, what their colors are going to be. So this pot, top part of the bus is the light part, and so I'm going to do the light part. So what color should it be? I make it kind of yellowish. And these buildings back here, when I get when I start doing them, I'm going to go back in there and make them here because the sun's right there. I'm gonna make that pretty much orange and I'm not gonna do the flaring like in the sun because I'm not looking through a lens and so I wouldn't get that. If you're if you're on plain air, you're not getting flares. Like when you take your camera, the camera makes those little flares because of the lens. And so you wouldn't really get that in real life when you're looking at it. Matter of fact, you couldn't even stare into that because you know, you're blinded. And so you can just make a little bit of the this part so warm and I'll make that orange when I get to that part but right now it's just I'm putting in the light colors that's the first step light colors light colors it determines what I want to do now it doesn't mean I can't put in light or dark colors right away so let's say I wanted to have some soft edges for some of this and I want it to be dark 
you know, then if you want soft edges, you have to do a while sweat, right? And so you can put some darks in there too, knowing that that's your second step is to put in the middle tones and darks. So you can kind of combine step one and step two together if you need to have it soft edge, right? Because it needs to be soft edge certain things. I'm not going to go really dark with my dark darks, like this pole is really, really dark. I'm not going to go with that, but I can, because I don't need a soft edge. I want that to be hard edge, so I'll go for that later. If you guys got any questions too, if anybody's watching, I haven't looked to see if anybody's watching, but if you have any questions, please write them out. I'll look up every once in a while and I can answer your questions. So if there's nobody watching now, but um, uh, some people you will be watching later on when, when it's replayed, or replayed, I mean. It'll be replayed over and over again, and as many times as you want, it's always there. So here I'm putting a few more darks in there. And also, if you want to paint this, you know, this is not a paint along like my Thursday night paint alongs, but I have no problem with you going and using this pit photo and um, painting along or trying it. I have no problem with that whatsoever. I'm here to teach you. And if this is what you want to paint, then go right ahead. This is usually my Sunday mornings when I'm doing it for myself. I'm kind of just here to practice this morning. And actually, I want to get it outside. And I usually have done it with Facebook. But I think I'll be able to do it on YouTube also. Um, because now that people know that I am doing it, it's like most people are not on YouTube all the time, but they are sure are on Facebook a lot. So that's what I was doing it on Facebook when I was outside doing plain air. But I could possibly do, um, if I let everybody know on Sunday that when I'm going to be doing it during the week, then I can just put it up there on YouTube and then the people know. I should see if I can do it on that read restream because you can do it on both at the same time but I just started doing this on Sunday morning one one Sunday morning I was out there last or last spring and fall and and summer last year I just got into into on Sunday morning just going out there outside and doing some plain air and then when I got cold this winter I took it inside here so see, I'm just using um, soft edges. I'm just getting some of the color in there. Again, this is still my lights, lights and mediums. And this got a little bit too dark right there. So we'll just crop that out a little bit. Again, this is my, this is my mediums and lights. Actually my lights and I put some mediums in there that I needed to be soft edged. All right, and so let's go to our other brush. Let's go to our quarter inch brush now and work my background to foreground. And this is my big, large mediums and large darks. And that's step two. And like I said, this is also part of step one and step two together. But now I'm going to go into my mediums. And the mediums, I'm going to go from the back and make them the lighter. And they're the big areas, not the detailed darks. That's step three. Detailed darks are step three. That's going to be the wires and the big darks. And the big super super darks and so here the sun is and so for that area i'm going to take and make these buildings a lot of this stuff is just um this is all this drawing is from the stoplights and everything but there's a building right here i'm gonna make i'm gonna start them and this is already dry so i'm getting hard edges but i'm gonna keep the value down so it stays back morning maria Thanks for coming and watching. Hopefully some, um, hopefully some weekend I'm going to see if I can get some of you guys to come out. I'm painting on Sunday morning in the summer. It'd be kind of fun to have a, a whole group out there painting. There is going to be one Sunday up in McHenry where um, they're, they're doing the McHenry chamber or whatever is making a, doing kind of a plein air thing. And they asked me if I would do a plein air painting. So it's a, basically a whole Sunday, and they're going to be at the McHenry Dam. And I was going to invite everybody out to see if we can all paint together. And just, you know, an invitation, no no costs or anything. It's just everybody I come out and just paint on a, at the McHenry Dam. I, I have to remember, I don't remember the date offhand, but I'll have to give everybody that date. It'll be kind of fun to have everybody come out and just sit there and paint. They wanted to make it a competition, so I said, no, just don't. Let's just make it so that we can all go out there and paint and have some fun together. So 
So I'm going to let a lot of the um, other art, art people, art clubs in the area know about that date. And we're just going to set up a tent so you can, and a couple of easels so you can show your stuff that you're working on during the day. And it should be kind of fun. And actually, it's the week after this. It's probably in June. I think it's June 13th is what I'm thinking of. If it's June 13th is a Sunday. But I think that's the day when um, I come back after Cedarburg because I am going to be um, painting in the Cedarburg competition, the plein air competition. So that should be kind of, fun, kind of fun. I'm really looking forward to that too. So see, I'm making this all kind of warm right here, orangey. And as I go away from there, I, I make it darker and not so vibrant colors. I'm taking the orangey yellow and I'm putting them against the, where the sun is shining against, right? And then these are buildings in the back here. And these are hard edged. You can see I didn't wet that afterwards and it's not dried enough. And then I go right to like a purple because I'm using purple and orange kind of to show my colors. My color scheme is in the, is in yellows and purples. That doesn't mean you don't use other colors in there too. Uh, Pamela asks, good morning. While you are in the studio this morning, if you had ventured outside, how would you have bundled your paints for the trip? Um, well, yes, Holbein does not um, dry, but what I do is I keep the palette open, um, and so it doesn't run, because it gets, what you want to do is, if you start a new palette with Holbein, what you want to do is make it, keep it open for like a couple of days, so it gets, it gets hard, but it doesn't get hard, it gets rubbery, and so that it doesn't run anymore. So that's that's what, that's what I do, is I keep it open, and I put it in. And actually, actually, their um, new palette that Holbein just put out, they have it so that the colors are upside upside down in one part, and so I was thinking about that. I'm like, boy, you guys, you know, why would you want to have it so that you have to have it upside down for hardening, but you have to let it harden first. Let the let it harden a little bit, so it, it gets rubbery. Like if I put my finger on it, it's hard and it's not running but it rejuvenates instantly so it does not does not harden to a hard rock it does give um it's almost like a rubbery feel effect to it when it dries which is what makes it so that you can re rejuvenate it instantly so putting all the little darks as it goes over this way At first, I thought this plein air thing was going to be in the middle of McHenry, but it ended up being up at the dam, Fox River Dam. It's a nice little, nice little area. We have a lot of fishermen there, and so it'd be fun to see maybe do some a couple of plein airs because it does start like at eight, but it runs till about three, something like that during the day. And so it'll be a whole day thing type of thing, and it'd be kind of fun just to do a couple of paintings. And I'd love to paint with people. Love to go out there and just you know show them, and maybe we do a little classing class type of thing where we all paint together. And we have fun again. That's probably June 13th is what I'm thinking the date is. If that's a Sunday in June after the Cedarburg plein air event in Cedarburg, Wisconsin. So now I'm doing all these little middle tones and darks going around. Now I could have put masking fluid down for these cars, but I'm not that tight or detailed. Um, so I don't need to have it that detailed. Uh, if you want like really super fine details where you're hyper realism, hyper realism kind of painter, then yes, you maybe want to go in there and make all this stuff. And, and here I didn't wait for it to dry. So look at what I got there. And so that's all wet, but that's okay. You know, it's kind of like more, more, um, it's a little bit looser. I try to do my paintings a little bit looser. Now the front of the bus is a little bit darker. So see how this wash all comes together. I always let show my students how to try to not paint pieces and paint areas, big areas. Remember I said my step two is big areas, big areas of medium and dark. So this is a big area of medium and it's not my dark. It's also my darks. And so I put that in there all together. I try to make this background look all come together. So this has to be a little bit darker. 
I noticed in my in my um, picture there, this is a little bit darker. And so how can you, you know, it's nice to do a wash like this because it makes the wash feel more watercolor-like, right? And that's what's great about watercolor is a wash like this where it's all nice and flow fluid. And now I, I went, I probably should have went around the head of this guy, but I'm just going to right through, make this a little bit darker. I can make it look like there's other things in the back there, but I'm going to uh, use some of my opaques and just get my opaques to do that. I have no problem with using opaques. I know as many of you know that now, by now, that I don't, uh, I'm not a, impression, or, um, a purist of transparent watercolorist. I like to use everything possible, so I don't have to have just watercolor, transparent watercolor. I also use gouache acrylic and also the regular gouache all together. It's all good to me. And so that looks pretty nice right there. Um, my detailed darks in here, that'll be my detailed darks. I, well, let's just go in there and see if we can put some color into that. And that's um, a bluish to the side of the bus. I'm going to make it a little bit lighter. And try to show like the that you know they're the cars. I mean, you know that by the shape of them, they're, they're buses and cars, right? And so I just have to, I don't need to like do such detail that you explain that. That's pretty ex self-explanatory. It's a city scene. Our minds are pretty well, and they know things. And so if they see that this is a city and that this is a street, our minds already put that together, that that's probably cars, right? <laughs> it's just, you don't have to explain everything the viewer will be smart enough to know and it automatically it's like an automatic thing that the viewer will know that this is probably cars the subconscious vision will just make people think what you know what it is they'll know they'll know what it is and then by little things like that like a windshield of the car automatically it doesn't have to be so exact that you know that's you can even make it abstract kind of in a way because then People know, people know that that's going to be a car and then underneath here, we've got a couple, we got wheels. It's usually dark underneath the car. Like the, it's, it's up above the ground and then it throws a shadow, right? And then you get a nice dark. You don't have to explain everything in a photo or in a painting. You can just suggest what things are and automatically they will be what they are. The viewer will understand it. Let's see if this is dry yet. So there's my background, and you notice how it goes from light where the sun is, and as it goes this to this direction to the to the left, it gets darker and darker. And this building, I kind of I should have made maybe another layer of buildings, which I still can do. Like I can make some of the buildings like behind that to give it more dimension. Not that important, but you can. I mean, you can get in there. I could also have brought in this dark that's a little bit down below this and maybe even reflect these into the streets, which I can still do. You know, that's no big deal. Now, on this photo, you see there's a white spot right here. That's just, again, from the lens of the camera. And so you got to realize that the camera shoots it differently. It, um, I've always been told by plein air painters that photographs lie. And they do because they're being taken with a lens, and the lens a lot of times will give brightness of areas and shiny things, spots like that, because it's shining into the lens of the camera. So you don't have to put that in there. You can put it in there too to make it look. And they even have, in Photoshop, they have filters to get, make that lens, or lens flare into the thing. So, oh, we got some questions here. I put them in that silicone sealed storage palette and take them out. You just place that palette on your bigger palette or have a small mixing space for the camera. Yeah, so these palettes um, that I use, and also the palette, these um, these palettes right here, again, the whole bind paints is great because let them be, set, you know, you don't have to put the top on it. Let them, let them dry a little bit, and then they, they will harden um, enough so they don't run. You know, just, just let it be open. They will still rejuvenate instantly as soon as I put water on You see, I mean, these I don't, I haven't put fresh paint in this, I think, for about a month now. Uh, I've been using, you can see there's holes on the bottom of the palette because I, I, I'm kind of running out of some of the colors. So, but I just put in, and what I do is I just leave the palette open then for a couple days and let it harden a little bit. 
but it will not harden to a rock like a lot of the other ones will because they have oxgall. Holbein does not have oxgall, so it will not it will not harden to a hard rock. All right, so that's that's good. A little bit darker now, and these are still not my detailed darks. This is my large area darks. This is still what I'm doing. The second step. This is still the second part of the second step, which is your big lights. I mean your big mediums and your big darks. Big and that detail. I'm not talking about detail. Let's make this a little bit brighter. And the only thing I'm probably not going to get in this picture that is in the photo is that kind of mist, not mist, but um, fogginess to it. You know, like that. It's like a little misty fogginess to like sometimes you see smog. I'm not going to put that in. You know, I, I just don't feel it needs that. You could, you know, you, I could add some white to my pigment too, and it gives it that kind of chalky look. And a couple of people asked me too, it's like when I'm out there, how much drawing do I put into my picture? It all depends on how complicated the scene is, but like things like wires and stuff, when I'm out there, I just go for the big areas first and I kind of let the um, detail wait for that uh, to where, when I'm painting. So, because I want to do it a little bit faster when I'm outside because I, I don't want the sun to change so much. So I'm a little, bit, a little bit faster when it comes to the drawing and I don't draw as much on. And I try to draw with my paint. You know, I try to draw with my paint and so, here, of course, I when I'm in the, or in the studio, I can do it as detailed as I want because I have time and there's no worry. I'm copying from a photograph, so and even if you're um, if you are a beginner and you want to even trace it, that's fine with me. Because you know, the drawing is number one. I mean, you have to get that drawing in right. That perspective has to look good because unless your unless your style is very very loose, where you don't care about this the perspective being exactly right and stuff. But if you're outside and you want to look like what it is, then your drawing has to be on. You have to make it look like whatever it is that you're doing. And, and drawing is just practice. That's one way of getting good with That's the only way of getting good with drawing is practicing it and just doing a lot of it. I know they have some, um, they do have instruments that help you. You know, you can buy those those Lucy things they're called Lucy you know where you look through something and see in the distance you know and that's fine you know, go ahead and use it if you need to use something like that um, it, though it helps you in, in the long run if you learn how to draw a little bit and not a little bit but how to draw in general because then you don't have to you see things other than just the lines you think you see things three-dimensionally you start looking at things a little bit differently so that if you do need to change something you can change things without having to have it there exactly you know like working from your imagination and i'm still gonna have to get my book out for that i know i keep on people keep on asking when is that book coming out um i just have to work on that soon <laughs> i have a sketchbook that i've already written it's just that i need to take photos of things that you're going to be sketching and it's going to teach you how to work from your imagination or work from your head from your mind's eye And when it comes to the uh, McHenry plein air thing that we're going to have, I'm also going to tell like if you or tell your art clubs, I will be telling Main Street in Lake Zurich about it and see how many people from their club wants to come up or from their place. And it's going to be kind of fun, and um, it's McHenry County, but really close to Illinois County or um, Lake County. But if you, anybody wants to tell other people, you know, be my guest. I'm sure I'm going to be advertising it a lot when I get down to, um, when they give me all the information, exactly what's going to be going on. I just talked with them last weekend. And so they're still pushing things together and they're still getting their brochure made. And they just want to know that what I wanted to do with this, because they didn't have anybody really to run that part of it. And so I and don't have to run very much. I just told them, make it simple don't make it a big deal just make it so that we can just go there and paint and i'm going to bring a tent a table and just set up some easels so that people can put their stuff down there maybe they can even sell their stuff if you want 
bring your own easel and set up your what you have done there that day. It should be fun. Artists getting together is my favorite thing. You know, just coming together. You don't need to have a. We don't need to spend money, and we're just going to go there and paint. And I hope we will make some money. Maybe we can make some money as artists. We can go there and just um, sell what we were painting. A lot of these places love to um, use us artists to get people to come and stuff and stuff. I said, you know, don't don't be charging the artists though. We don't want to be charged. <laughs> we want to just paint, you know, basically. So don't be making us think this is going to be a big deal for us to um, work at and stuff. No, we just want to paint. So that's what's going to be. We're just going to paint. So see, I'm now getting my big um, mediums and darks. And you notice I didn't go as dark as the photo yet, but I, I can I can still put my dark darks in there by when I get to my detail darks. Because these are not my detail darks, these are my large area darks. Even the pole itself is a large area dark, and that's step three. And in step three, you go from the large area darks down to, actually no, you go to the detail darks, but I'm just gonna take this pull right here. I'm just gonna put that in there, and it's very, I mean, look at all the detail in there. But I don't need a detail again yet. I'll get that later. I'll get the details. Now right here, I want this stuff to be very, very bright. And so I'm gonna go with like a yellow, like it's burnt out, like the sun is burning it. And because it has flares, but again, I don't wanna do the flares. I just wanna do the the color. And so it, it looks, it's so bright, the sun, that it's, it's making it warm. It's making it a warm area. And this I was taught by um, a excellent oil painter Carl Bretzky and he had uh, I took his workshop at the, at the last well actually two years in a row I've taken his workshop in Grand Marais where there's a plein air fest and we have many workshops which I'm going to do a mini workshop there this year and I'm going to hopefully be teaching gouache and watercolor together which I'm doing right now so basically it's going to be this <laughs> and so we're going to go to some red here It's still a big area, but I'm going slower because I, I want to get some of the, the feel of the, this telephone pole and all the stuff that is on here. I mean, this telephone pole has so much stuff on it. It's unbelievable how much stuff is on here. And then on this side, it's dark. And as I go down, I just get dark, really nice and dark. And you can even use black or mix your blacks, whatever you want to do. I like to start out with black and then I put color into my black. It goes all the way down to here. And I'm not looking really careful at the photo. Um, I, if, I, if I was doing this a little bit tighter than I possibly would want to, I would want to go in there and look at, you know, if I'm doing it more of a tight kind of painting. I maybe want to go in there and make it a little bit more tighter, but I'm not, so I'm just going to... I'm not gonna make up the picture really big. Now, if I'm there outdoors and watching it and seeing it, then yes, I'm, I'm, I'm actually trying to do a lot of what's there. And it's nice because it's all in focus because it's whatever, I can step over a little bit and, and when I'm sitting, standing there, I don't have to be stuck with just whatever the photograph took. And that's a great thing about photo or about being outdoors, plain air. It's like you have a lot of options where in a photograph, you only have the one option of what you took there. All right, that's a big dark, right? Big dark, and look at how we got this light through there. And actually, I make this a little bit lighter, so I'm gonna pull some of this out. Put some more orange here, some more red, some more yellow. And I was talking in my class yesterday, and a lot of us don't use enough. Where exactly in Henry? Um, if you look on, if you GPS or if you go to Google Maps. Put in uh, McHenry Dam, the dam. There's a there's a dam in McHenry, and it's by the park. What's that park called? Moraine National Park. Uh, this is across the street. So there's a lot to paint. It's on a river. It's on the Fox River, and it's called McHenry Dam. Yeah, you can actually look at it, and there's always a lot of fishermen there, so it'd be kind of fun maybe to even paint some fishermen fishing. I'm sure if um, 
the people are, who are writing this or watching this right now, they'd be very happy to be you know, promoting it. There, it's you know, it's kind of a small, small town thing, but that'd be kind of fun. I definitely think it'd be kind of fun. All right, so let's go in here now and let's get our. I'm, I guess we're ready for detailed darks. So detailed darks. What are detailed darks? Detailed darks are detailed darks. They're basically the small things in your painting. But before that, let's go in here and get our background. I just got our person. It's still a little bit larger, and so let's put our person in there. And I drew it up. I did, couldn't see really. I made up this person, and you know, sometimes I had to do that because this person was way back there. And again, you don't know exactly what that person is doing, or because you know, it's so far away. That's where you make up. You know, I was in those for so long. I made all my all the photos I did for TV commercials or all the drawings I did for TV commercials were all made up. So you make everything up and so what's this person doing? He's probably just walking across the street. He may have something on. So what What are people look like when they're walking downtown or whatever? Just look at people and sketch people. You know, some people have a backpack on. Some people have, you know, a big winter coat on. If it's winter, if there's um, here, he's probably wearing some dark pants some jeans does it mean they have to make them blue no it just makes them uh, he's kind of silhouetted against this he's got shoes on probably <laughs> and then he could have like um, looks like he's carrying something here and I'm just gonna put it like that is it male female old young you know all those things you kind of just kind of figure out and you can do that in your drawing when you first start drawing you know, does he have a dog next to him? Does it, you know, what is it that he's doing? And it's kind of important that you make him look pretty good because he is pretty much the center of interest, part of the center of interest. He's not just the center of interest. He is part of it because the whole center of interest is this whole area. The sun and this whole area right here is the center of interest. It's the first thing you see. A little bit of sun. And I will be putting lights, reflections on him later on when it's dry so that he just pops out and all these little light, light I'm gonna take my white from my um, from my gouache I'm just gonna make a really nice nice um, fleckled light on him <laughs> all right so let's just do some some shadows so here's going like this and so he'll be shadowed right and so we're gonna take the shadow and pull it how far you ever you want you know it's like I'm making this up so you decide on how far this shadow will go you know it goes away from him and it's kind of whatever is him and then all right there's the shadow and this is the shadow of this pole so you want to always think out where your sun is go like that and then just bring the shadow and now the street look how rotten the street is the street you decide on how rotten you want to make it if i want to put all that stuff in there i can still do that you know i can go in there later but again i'm getting my big stuff in there now now back here I'm going to start putting in some of the darks back here in the front of the cars or make them kind of like in shadow but not as dark. I actually make my darks even darker because of the windshield and stuff now. Remember before I did the meat, the lights and so now I can get my darks. So underneath the cars will be a dark. Underneath the cars. It was dark before, but because it dried so light, now I can go back in and get them even darker. I'm still going to try to get them so that things float together. I really like the look of when, when you have things float together, and not just do individual, you know, things on your painting, so that everything's so separated. This way, things come together as one. See how you just. And the bigger I can make my washes, the better the washes look, right? Because when you do a big wash, they look like more like watercolor washes. I mean, that's the kind of wash I like. It's a big wash where I can have all these things, like the granulation happening. And I, I'm so can't wait until Hobine. I, I was going to try that um, additive that you can make your watercolors more, do the more of the um, granulation. It's like this granulation formula you can use that I know Hoban has, I was going to try it. and um, But they're coming out with a co with colors that granulate really well. And I know that other companies already have some of that, that granulation things and stuff. So I can't wait until Hoban gets some of that. 
they do represent Holbein, and so I do I do love their colors and stuff. And I have tried Daniel Smith's um, granulation; they're very cool. Getting another dimension. These are, and I'm not sure if this is exactly what's back there, but it is what I'm putting in, so it's good enough. And if I were there again, you decided how much you want to put in. Some people like to put all that stuff in there, every window and stuff. And there's people like El Alvaro Castane, who will like this whole thing will be just one big wash and very loosely done too, where you wouldn't see a lot of that stuff that I'm putting in even. Actually, I learned a lot of that through doing some of the paintings of his, you know, and um, that was last week's um, kind of assignment we were working on through Andrew Wyatt. And so really, you know, if you, if you like a certain um, instructor or, you know, like a sergeant or a homer and you love their work, copy it, copy it and try it because you learn so much from that. I had done that a lot when I was in school. I mean, I took a lot of sergeant's work. Homer's work, John Pike's work, and I would copy it a lot. I mean, a lot, lot, because then you learn. Like you don't, just don't, you know, try to take, um, make it your own. Like say it's your own. No, just um, you can let people know. And I don't know yet if that's legal to sell, but I think I just saw in a gallery that somebody had done something like that. So I think as long as you let people know that that's you're copying, then it's okay to even sell it. But I'm not 100% sure about that, so you may want to ask a lawyer that first. <laughs> but you definitely can um, copy it, you know, just um, and have no problem with that because they, those artists probably did it themselves. So there's the bus. See how the buses are coming together? I'll put a little bit of it. Let's get some blue in here some blue in this person and then I'm gonna put some blue in here because I'm figuring the side of the bus may be blue. Get a little bit other color in there besides just the color I've been using. And now I'm also gonna bring this down and rough them up the street a little bit. So I, don't, I, don't, I like my streets to be a little bit rougher so that it doesn't look like it's a brand new paved. So I'm going to take my bigger brush. Let's take my, actually, let's take my large brush here. I'm just going to go across here quickly. Maybe even give it a little bit of reflection. And then I can move, use it as wet in the wet. I can put some color in there if you want. You can also make, maybe there's a line down the middle of the street. I can go across and make texture by going across quickly and use a side of your brush and pick up texture from the from the paper. Get, get my perspective right if I'm gonna do the perspective like of the street. It's going back like that, so I gotta keep that in mind. You know, your perspective in everything. And so always remember that that it's just not if you see it in a photograph, no, if it's not right in a photograph, then you gotta make it right, the perspective. Perspective is everywhere, and so you really just can't fudge it. You need to make it look like whatever <laughs> the perspective it is. Make it look right. Like let's say somebody put a patch in the street. You can tell the patches are done uh, with the perspective of the street, but let's say they didn't, and they made a round patch or something, or they made a patch that was a little bit on an angle, and that doesn't look right. If it doesn't look right in the photograph, then don't put it in there. <laughs> Um, just because that they made a patch of cement there or whatever, or tar or blacktop, it doesn't mean you have to do with that, especially if it doesn't look right. If it doesn't look right, then don't put it in. Use your ability as an artist to change that and make it look right, because you're the visual. You're doing the visual. So the street worker maybe didn't do it right, but you can do it back right again for the city. <laughs> It also helps to show dimension by doing it right, by doing the, by putting in the the correct perspective of the of whatever that you're, it is that you're painting. All right, now we're ready for super details. And what, this is the final stage. Now this is where you get all the little details that you see everywhere. All the lot wires and lines and all that stuff is all detailed. 
and the doors and windows and all that stuff. And this is probably the most, the, the part that I don't like watching when I'm watching a demonstration because it's sort of like, it does make the painting look better, but it's the most boring part to watch because it's basically all I'm doing is copying what I see. And you don't learn very much from me doing, you know, something that's just what's on the photograph. But I'm just going to go in here and I'm just going to trace what I see in the photograph. And I do it with different values. Um, sometimes it's really dark, but there's times when I'll, I'll put like down here, I'll try to do it with a little bit brighter color. I'll do it with the yellow and orange and stuff that I use over here. But that's what makes this painting look so good is that I love the look of these wires and stuff and of the lines and, and the telephone poles. That's why this picture looks so great. So again, next week I will not be doing a Sunday morning thing because I'll be in Quincy, Illinois teaching a workshop on Saturday and Sunday. And then I'm getting ready and I may go out that week, the week before, I may go out and do some practicing. So I may do some, you know, um, live stuff that week before I head to Denver and do the Denver Pace show. That should be really, I, I just can't wait for that. That's so much fun. You're gonna need so many people. Hope to do a lot of live stuff up there too. Hopefully uh, they'll, um, have good Wi-Fi so I can actually show you what I'm doing there. It'd be kind of fun to, I know there's hundreds and hundreds of people that are going to be painting there. So that'd be fun. I mean, people painting together, artists painting together is my favorite anyways. So this is going to be a, a riot. If you haven't signed up for it, I know they're going to do, you can sign up for like being at home, but, um, and watch it, what we're doing at Pace, but, and they have the, they have 80 artists, 80 teachers. I'm not teaching there this year. Hopefully I get to know some people. Maybe I can teach there sometime. But I'm there to just have fun. And I'm going to go there and um, just meet people and just paint my butt off. Look at all those nice wires. Isn't that great? Gotta love wires. Yeah, so Pace will be, I guess, in the March. Let's see what date is that. That's going to be, I think, from the 20th or 23rd to the 28th. I think the last week in May. Or no, I'm going to talk about it. I'm looking at April. Hold on, let me see. <laughs> it's the 21st to the 26th. So in May, 21st to the 26th is the Pace in Denver. And I may I may drive up early just to go and check out Denver and also maybe head to Utah to the mo monuments there. And why not go there a little bit earlier and check out other, other things. Now you notice what I'm going to do here. See how I put some reflections and shadows of these little wires on the pole. That was a trick I learned from Shapiro. He always would do things like that on the trees. And also John Pike did that. So see by me doing John Pike paintings, and how they did trees and incorporate it. I can incorporate it into something like this, which is not what he painted, but I mean, I can use it like, this is like a tree trunk and then you can put the, all the shadows from like, pretend like these are leaves and then you can put them onto your pole. So it's all about learning, you know, it's all about learning. And, and so I can use my gouache here and I can put it on thick too later. And which I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go put some thick stuff in there. Now, these wires that are really long you know, practice them. Don't just, if you don't know how to do them, like and I like to put the paper in a certain way so I can just go across. Now wet my brush. And um, have a sheet of paper next to you just to try it. You wanna go like this and just kind of see if you can do one shot. One shot, oh, you can't see it. So, uh, so I'm just gonna try to practice that, you know, and because you don't wanna go slow, you just wanna kind of go one, two, and go over my drawing, my pencil drawing. But if you miss it, that's okay too. Let me just put, maybe make an extra line there. And somebody would ask me, well, why do you put them in there? Isn't that like 
kind of sloppy and stuff but that's the reason i did this picture is because of those lines <laughs> because that's what's so cool about this all these lines in in there and all the telephone poles look at all these telephone poles back here that's what makes the whole picture look so great i love these poles i've taken a bunch of poles in cities when i'm in the city i love taking alleys because in the alleys you get all these poles and stuff and so if you're down in the city maria's probably down in the city go into your alley and pick some of these uh, some of these poles and um, even alley scene i used to love painting alleys in chicago oh it says sunday may 30th sorry about that panel <laughs> oh yeah i'm already too far too far advanced <laughs> so excited about may that i'm already in May. so that was a mistake last night So then right here where my son is, those lines need to be really nice and um, I'll have to change that when I get off here so that people don't think it was it's still coming up in May. Well maybe May 30 they can do another one. <laughs> uh oh I didn't show up my phone. here now these are fun these wires over here these are all kinds of stuff happening here and this is my center of interest so get in there and get all that stuff in there make sure you get it all in there here's a this is a um light pole back there here we got some street lamps street lights and i, I try to make them all a little bit different uh, you know some parts of maybe this one will be a little bit darker oh don't go into that tree it's behind it some wires and again if I didn't get dark enough with it or didn't get light enough with it I can still go back in with the um, gouache and I will make it thicker and darker or lighter I mean I'll make it lighter which you know is a watercolor no-no um, but not for me I, I, I don't mind doing that I will put um, whatever it takes to make it look good <laughs> yeah, make it darker there Let's get our um, detail back here now and these are my dark darks my middle these are again my my um, detailed darks I call them my detailed darks and so they 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 indicate and they make things look like what they are you know I go in here now and this is the side of the building and so they they actually do something these darks do things these are detailed darks and they create shapes and they explain what things are where the lights usually don't do it as much but they do some of them do that by painting around negatively you can get some of those details but these really identify everything then like here's a satellite dish so this i definitely identifies things and that's where beginners get confused because they feel like their painting has to look good the whole way through and that doesn't happen in watercolor it doesn't um you you paint it as you go along and then it, at the end when you're putting in your dark details that's when it starts looking like something um shapiro always said that your paintings gotta go through the uglies first and it was so true it was so true that you i mean they it doesn't look like anything in in the beginning and there's a lot of things that are still coming like even here like the the, the sidewalk um cracks in the sidewalk the little lines in the sidewalk and and like signs if there were signs here or whatever it's all it's, it's coming like even maybe he's got stripes on his shirt you know you can wait until the end this is detailed darks and way back there i'm going to put in some details too but i'm going to keep it down in values but i do want to put some detail back there and maybe on these buildings back here i can make a a little bit of detail again it all depends on how much detail you put in and what's your style like is your style very loose i mean there's people who are very very loose that this is way too tight for them you know you can make it really really super loose and it all depends on your style and that's just you you decide you will that you paint the way you paint you know and you and the more you paint the more you'll create a style that is your all your own and every like i said in my newsletter not the other week is that we all have our style right now i mean i have a style you have a style 
it may not be a popular one or a very professional one. Maybe it's a beginner style because you are a beginner, you know, so you'll capture a more professional style as you go and practice more. And also, depending on what teachers you take, you'll get a lot from them and then you incorporate that into your, into whatever way you paint. I'm going to put some buildings back here that are like way in the distance. I'm just going to put them really light. Like I figure there's need to be one right there, maybe one right here. That just gives it another dimension. I'll do the same thing right here. And I think I'm ready for my my opaque lights, which is like an it's still part of the detailed darks, but they're my detailed lights. <laughs> like they're the parts of the, this painting that I, I because I'm doing it not traditional transparent watercolor. I'm going to try to do a little bit of with gouache and stuff. So I guess it's another step as part of the same detailed darks. So it's maybe just is called detailed darks and lights when you're doing gouache because I'm going to take and use my small rigger brush and I'm going to go in here. First I get this one line that goes all across here. Some more lines here. Some hanging wires. So now I'm going to go in and get my detailed um, lights. Thanks again for letting me know that, Pamela, about uh, May 30th. <laughs> I'm not sure why I thought it was May last night. See, I'm going to put in um, lights. These are these are opaque lights now. This is, this is called gouache. And gouache is opaque watercolor. So let's say I want to put little hits in there, or I miss something. I, I want to get some lights in there, parts of it, like... I'm just going to go in and put in a detailed dark and this is again if you're going to enter some shows you can't do this this part you cannot do because this is this is squash now aws you can do this with aws you can go ahead and put this in you can use um gouache um twsa you cannot because it's more transparent watercolor and this is not transparent this is very opaque this is white with a little bit of yellow i'm putting in here and i put it on his shoulders and on top of his head I'm putting in the little light areas that just make it look brighter actually I might put pure white in there to make it thick Maybe down here put in some of the parts like in the windows and a little detail maybe some of these telephone poles can be light like they're hitting the light bright light area instead of being dark which I could have you know put masking fluid on before if you if you're doing this for transparently then beforehand you think of all these things you know and make and sure you maybe put masking fluid down first but look at how this part right there is just spread out it's not look cool how it is it's wet surface and so it just the white kind of blends out and that's kind of cool too maybe put some in the street too some texture and and right here maybe right down the middle here and i like using for this i don't like to use the watercolor i like to use the medium that it's made for this gouache is made for this this is opaque watercolor so it's going to cover up those areas really well because that's what it's made for it's made to cover up and it's, it's gouache it's opaque meaning that it's going to cover really well because they use more pigment in their gouache and it's not a whitening agent like a lot of companies used to use whitening agent and that's not happening anymore with especially not with Holbein some of the companies still do use whitening agents to make their um, gouache that Holbein. Holbein makes it with by, by producing their um, their water or their gouache with more pigment. It's just pigmented more. Highly pigmented. Meaning that there's a lot more pigment in it, right? And so it covers up and it, it's like having a good paint that covers up. And so when you use it when you use it um, with a lot of water and it becomes transparent it still may it's a little bit harder to make it transparent because there's so much pigment in there and so you have to let it really bleed so you don't have to use as much that's kind of a good thing right you know the cars back here i think i'm just playing out here guys <laughs> i think we're almost done 
Yeah, I think, I think that's about it, guys. What do you think? See something on it that you don't like? I'm always up for critique. Like, if you see something that is not right or you want to make it right, it's definitely, um, I've got to give a critique coming up in May. <laughs> the second Thursday in May, I'm going to be doing a critique for our club, which I now um, finally took the reins and handed them over. I, I used to be president until last month. And so we got a new president finally. <laughs> and so um, Judy is going to be our new president of the Lake Region Watercolor Guild. And this month I'm doing a, or next, yeah, in May, I'm doing a critique of our members work and it'll be online uh, I'll show you it'll be online and stuff but I'm critiquing their work and I'm taking their work and actually taking it into Photoshop and I'm, instead of just talking about it I'm going to do it and show them what I think could be done with their paintings it's a great club if you're if you're in the area um, Lake Regions Watercolor Guild it's in Illinois it's in um, Grays it's going to be moving back to Grays Lake in September we, we stop for the summer And we'll be coming back in September again. And we'll be at the Grays Lake Bank. There's a bank there that we um, have the demonstrators come to. And we also have workshops there. We bring in some really good art, um, workshop artists. See, I'm putting some super darks in there now. <laughs> Let's stop. Otherwise, I'm not going to overdo this thing. And actually, this got a little bit too overworked with too many dark colors and I'm going to get some lights I'm going to rub out so watch this I'm going to rub out some of this but I want that sun to really shine right there so take your brush and I'm just going to take some opaque watercolor some gouache and I'm going to take some orange and yellow I'm just going to put it right over it to make it look like it's really shiny right there and make it really dark right away too but that area, if it looks like the sun is really burning it, and a lot of times it even burns out the area where you can't see it, it's just totally white, which is what's happening in this picture right here. You can see it burns out some of the actual view of it. All right, let's take the tip off, and that way I have to stop. <laughs> so it does look like it's raining out there right now. Oh, that's good. But hopefully, like I said, next week, no no demonstration on Sunday. I will be in Quincy, Illinois, at a workshop, doing a workshop on Saturday and Sunday. But maybe during the week, I have to get ready for my May, May thing there. So there you have it, guys. Any questions on it? You just let me know. You always put it in the, in the comments afterwards. And I, I also um, answer questions even afterwards. So if you want to put any questions in the comments, just let me know. Actually, I think I should have gotten a little bit darker in some spots. Nah, it's okay. I like the I like the mood of the dark through here. So let me just one thing. I'm just looking at this. I like when things are just focused towards the center of interest, and this seems to be a lot of stuff happening down here. So I'm just going to darken it. I'll show you how to darken something real quickly. There's no time limit on this on Sunday morning, so I'm just going to go in here and darken some of this together we don't need to have this so much detail there either see how it just brings everything over to this area there we go I like to keep values together large values together see that was just and it was taking over the person and the person really should be the center of interest and put it darker back here Reflections in the street. Okay, I gotta stop. <laughs> All right, have a great Sunday, guys. Um, hopefully, see you on, on next Thursday. I'll be doing my paint along on Thursday.